Um, luckily, our questions are coming in, and I always think that it is so fun to hear from the panelists about their writing. And Karen, the first question in our Q&A box is what you asked, what sparked the story, what inspired the story that you read from tonight? And that's directed at all our panelists. Well, I, I'll, I'll go first. Um, when I first started this book in 2019, I was inspired by my love of the Albuquerque Santa Fe area and um, a movie born yesterday for the older folks. We all know that one and um, Devil Wears Prada. So it was kind of a, a celebration of all three of those things. And then 2020 kind of hit. And there's a thing in fiction called the contemporary now where you sort of take a snapshot of the world and that's when your book is set. And it doesn't matter if someone picks it up five years later, it still feels like the present day to them. Um, and it felt like in 2020, the, the contemporary now changed literally every day. So I would start every day writing with a different spark. You know, that day I would be really, you know, angry or despaired about the condition of the world and, you know, all of the stuff that happened in 2020. Or I'd be really amazed and up, uplifted by how, how courageous people were being and, and acts of, of, of extreme self-sacrifice that, that was being made all around us. So things would shift. And so it felt like I was just like, for the first time, this was the first book where I ever felt like uh, you know, it was a shotgun and I was just scattered everywhere. So it took me forever to sort of rein in and, and when I'm down to going back to being inspired by, I had to change the setting of the book because I still want to get to Albuquerque Santa Fe with a different headspace, um, but still inspired by Born Yesterday and The Devil Wears Prada and a little bit of some of the um, symptoms that we saw emerging in society during 2021. So long story, but that's, that's it. I'll go next. <laughs> um, my, an Alaskan wedding is set in Alaska. The, the wedding actually takes place in Fairbanks, Alaska, and it's a bucket list trip of mine. I want to see the eagles and see the northern lights. And so a lot of that's addressed in the book. I didn't get to go there because of COVID to research for the book. So that'll be a post book trip. But that was the inspiration behind the, the setting and different things. And it just made it kind of fun to have them rekindle their relationship in that setting. I was actually dating an artist at the time, um, decided not to chuck the whole book, even though I chucked the whole relationship. Um, <laughs> so um, it was uh, a cocktail party evening and everyone was sitting around and, and I started sort of, and I've never done this before, we, we sort of sort of started um, brainstorming. And I said, well, what about this character? Would you read about this character? And two hours later, we'd written the treatment for this book and um, the relationship ended, but um, I managed to finish the book. So um, that's the short version of that story. Yeah, I can share about mine. Um, I was living in Texas at the time when I started this one, I was living there for grad school. And I had a bit of a love-hate relationship with Texas that I wanted to explore in a book. And um, I think I wanted to capture the homesickness that I was going through, but also everything I loved about living there. And I had a lot of fun writing it. Um, personal experience, in short, I'll say personal experience. But um, I also wanted, I had a, a huge interest in trying to compare love to uh, a wildfire. And so that's the... I mean, I started writing this about 10 years ago, put it away and just picked it up during COVID and finally finished it. Does that mean you're on the West Coast and familiar with the fire season that was so awful in 2020? No, I'm in Texas. <laughs> we had our share of fires last year. They're already starting this year, right? Yeah. Not in my neighborhood yet. <laughs> and Dorothy, how about Spark for the book that you read from? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, I live in Squim, I've been here 11 years and I really love it here. And I've started writing stories set in this locale because we have beautiful mountains behind us and we have water to the north, a lot of trails to walk. It's a really gorgeous place for the outdoors, but it can be a lonely spot because it's a rural community. There are quite a few lesbians who live here, but there aren't natural ways for people to meet. We don't have bars, we don't have clubs, we don't have the things that you have in a city. And the stories I hear from people is that they often live alone or they live with a roommate that may not always be compatible. 
I saw a house for rent that had five bedrooms and five baths. And I saw, thought to myself, what a great house for a bunch of people to rent and save money and get to have companionship. So that, that just stayed in my mind for several years. And then when I decided to write another story set in Squim, I just ran with that and took five different personalities and put them all in the same space and then watch what happened with them. It was a lot of fun, very much enjoyed writing it. 